good day students myself dr monica khetarpal i am associate professor of physics in government dongar college bikaner i welcome you all in the lecture series of msc final physics in my lecture series i was dealing with the topic magnetism so in our today's lecture we will discuss langevin theory of paramagnetism this is the classical theory and this theory is based on a hypothesis that atoms in a paramagnetic material they have magnetic moment which is permanent hence because of this permanent magnitude magnetic moment they will have permanent magnetic dipoles for example here we have shown a permanent magnetic moment by mu and this is the direction of external applied field and the main assumption of the classical theory of paramagnetism is that the interaction between the dipoles is negligible we know that the energy of a dipole is minus mu dot h here we am we are taking the angle between dipole moment and the external field to be theta so the our energy of dipole will be minus mu h cos theta now this energy which is equal to minus mu h cos theta this will be minimum at theta equal to 0 and the minimum value of energy will be equal to minus mu h that means minimum energy occur when the angle between mu and h is 0 that means all of the dipoles tend to orient themselves in the direction of external applied magnetic field so knowing the energy we are finding the probability that a dipole is inclined at angle theta to the direction of external applied field this probability will be determined using the boltzmann factor the boltzmann factor is exponential minus e upon kb t kb is boltzmann constant this is the boltzmann factor at a particular temperature t here we have used energy minus mu h cos theta so now i am taking let dn be the total number of dipoles that are inclined at an angle theta the total number of dipoles will be dn equal to n0 exponential mu h cos theta upon kbt d omega here d omega is the solid angle and the solid angle is equal to 2 pi sin theta d theta and the mean magnetic moment in the direction of applied field it can be obtained by dividing the resolved component of magnetic moment of all dipoles in the direction of field to the total number of dipoles this is the resolved components and their sum is taken by taking integral that means the mean magnetic moment denoted by capital m or it can be also denoted as mu bar it is equal to integral mu cos theta dn and the total number of dipoles is integral dn substituting the value of dn mu is constant so taking it outside the integral and inside the integral we have a factor cos theta we have substituted dn dn was equal to n0 e raised to power mu h cos theta divided by kbt solid angle and solid angle is 2 pi sin theta d theta this is divided by the total number of dipoles 
this is the value of total number of dipoles now in order to solve this and making it simpler we are substituting mu h upon kbt to be constant factor a so we have magnetic moment will be mu integral cos theta e raised to power <coughs> a cos theta sin theta d theta this vector is divided by sin theta e raised to power a cos theta d theta now we are integrating it on integration we get magnetization to be equal to mu cot hyperbolic a 1 minus a this factor cot hyperbolic a 1 minus a it can be expressed as l which is a function of a this function is termed as langevin function now we will show how this integral m is simplified to mu la the integral was m there are two terms in this i am solving the numerator and denominator separately first of all i am solving the numerator in order to solve the numerator term i have taken cos theta to be x so dx will be minus sin theta d theta and my limits will also change when theta is 0 x will become 1 and when theta is pi my limit is minus 1 so making the change in the numerator function i have my numerator to be <coughs> m equal to mu integral x e raised to power ax and this function sin theta d theta this is minus dx so i have my magnetic moment upper part to be equal to mu which is outside x and in spite of the function e raised to power ax i have written it as 1 upon a d by dx e raised to power ax now i am integrating this term by parts <coughs> in the integral by parts we have first function <coughs> x as it is integral of second which is equal to e raised to power ax minus differential of first function and the differential of first function x is 1 this multiplied by integral of second which is e raised to power ax dx now we have to substitute the limits limits are from minus 1 to 1 so on substituting in spite of x the upper limit 1 we have e raised to power a and when the lower limit is substituted we have plus e raised to power minus a outside this whole function we have a constant term mu divided by a integrating the second term and further substituting the limits we obtain the value of numerator of the term of magnetic moment now we'll solve the denominator of this term the denominator is sin theta e raised to power a cos theta d theta it is simplified in the similar manner by putting x to be cos theta and dx to be minus sin theta d theta this will change the limits from 0 to pi to 1 to minus 1 and on solving this i have obtained the value of denominator so now i am collecting my numerator and denominator so as to find the value of average magnetic moment substituting and simplifying i get my value of capital m to be equal to m 
equal to mu multiplied by cot hyperbolic A minus 1 upon A. Here we have substituted cot hyperbolic A minus 1 upon A to be equal to Langevin function. This is the plot of Langevin function with A. Hence my magnetic moment comes to the final result of magnetic moment is mu la. Now in order to further simplify it and to obtain the susceptibility of paramagnetic material, I am expanding the exponential series. On expansion, I get m to be equal to mu e raised to power a. In spite of it, I am writing the series of exponential 1 plus a plus a square by 2 further terms higher order terms and similarly the expansion of e raised to power minus a and there are similar terms in the denominator. I have neglected the higher order terms of a and on simplifying the term I get my magnetic moment m to be equal to 2 mu a square divided by 6 a plus a cube. Here I am neglecting a cube. So I get my magnetic moment m to be equal to mu a upon 3. Here if n is the number of atoms per unit volume then magnetization is m bar equal to n m. That means the total magnetic moment can be obtained by multiplying it by number of atoms per unit volume. So m bar will be equal to mu a upon 3 multiplied by n. I have substituted in spite of a its initial value here we have taken a to be mu h upon kbt. So substituting in spite of a mu h upon kbt I get m bar equal to mu square hn upon 3 kbt. So the susceptibility of paramagnetic material chi will be m bar upon h. The susceptibility comes out to be mu square n upon 3 kbt. Here the function mu square multiplied by n divided by 3 kb is constant and let it be equal to c which is termed as Curie constant. So susceptibility chi is equal to C upon T. That means chi is inversely proportional to the temperature. The results so obtained by this classical theory, it is in good agreement with the experimental results. And the experimental was experiment was performed for oxygen gas. So according to the classical theory, we can divide, we can have a material which is made up of dipole moments mu and they tend to align themselves in the direction of externally applied magnetic field. Thanks a lot for watching.